Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the ultimate dragon build. Now, it mainly consists of tons of damage, like just nuking bosses as you just saw, multiple status effects like frost, raw, and even bleed, which is a little bit odd for a dragon theme build, but it's a great backup choice or even an alternative, and obviously having ranged attacks. So that kind of sums up most of the build, but let's actually dive into it now. Starting off with the weapons, we only have two of them to grab, and they're both really easy to find and get early on. For the first one, you'll want to pick up the Flamberge, since we're going to need an up-close weapon in general, and it also benefits the build aside from the damage it does. You could also use the Forked Greatsword if you have that already, basically the same thing, just a little bit less damage is all. Now the reason you want either one of these weapons is really straightforward. They both come with a passive amount of bleed buildup, so when you put the occult affinity on it, which is what we're doing, the weapon's damage and bleed buildup scale with arcane, which is going to be our most dominant stat. I didn't choose arcane to be my main focus just for the bleed buildup, it kind of just comboed really nicely with the dragon breaths, and I didn't want to just pass it up, so we get a nice little 2 for 1 here. Continuing on that, we're going to be able to proc a blood loss every 3 to 4 attacks consistently, so I also tossed on both the White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exultation. They both increase your damage output by a combined total of 30% for 20 seconds after a blood loss is procced near you. Fighting up close is completely covered with this one weapon, but the way it benefits this build a lot or increases the damage of the Dragon Breaths is through the blood loss buff. Getting that 30% damage boost is going to be huge, and that's something you'll always want to have before using them to, obviously, get the most damage output with each dragon attack. But getting up close to proc it, running back, and then using breath attacks is way too much work, especially if your aim is to use the dragon attacks more often, which I'm sure it is if you're watching a video labeled as Ultimate Dragon Build. Getting around this was really easy though. All you need is the Ash of War Seppuku to proc a blood loss on yourself and get that buff going whenever you want. Ideally during boss fights, but like I said, you can use it whenever you need. It also adds an extra 30 bleed buildup and physical damage to the weapon, which is another added bonus to this build. You'll also use this weapon to kill the dragons later on to gain their breath attack, so I'll show you where you can find this stuff right away. To get the Flamberge, you'll have to reach the Red Main Castle and pick it up off a corpse with a pumpkin head guarding it. You can only grab it before or after the Radon Festival and not during it for some reason. Kind of weird, but not a huge issue. Next, you'll be able to get the Lord of Blood's Exultation after defeating Eskar who can be found in the Liondale Catacombs. He has about 3.5 thousand health and he's pretty weak to bleed buildup so killing him with the help of the Flambridge will be really easy. And lastly, for the Ash of War Seppuku, you'll have to reach the mountaintops of the Giants area and kill an invisible teardrop scarab to be rewarded it. You can see its footprints in the snow and it's a lot quicker to be in its path when it comes around instead of chasing it from behind cause it is pretty fast. In regards to the helmet, I'm going to show you guys how to get that later on, like when I talk more about the armor stuff for this build, but anyways, back to the weapons. The other weapon we have is actually a sacred seal we're going to use to cast the dragon attacks, and for that, we're going to need the dragon communion seal. It's very important you get this exact one, because it increases the damage of all dragon incantations by 15% while scaling off of arcane. It's the only seal that scales with arcane, which again, you know, goes hand in hand with bleed buildups, but that's enough about bleed buildups. The main dragon Dragon attacks we're going to use are Smeric's Glinstone Breath for pure damage since it's going to be easy to buff, the Borealis Mist to proc Frost for a debuff, and the big chunk of health it takes away on the first cast, and if you want to add an extra status effect, which honestly I don't think is necessary at all because of how fast just these two alone kill bosses, but Ezek's Decay for Rod. Now when you're using them, you'll want to start with the Borealis Mist first so you can take a chunk of their health away and make them take 20% increased damage for 30 seconds. It basically primes an extra dragon attack to make it do more damage, and the one that follows with that is Smerig's Glintstone Breath. There's going to be a lot of things buffing this attack, such as the Frost we just proc for a 20% damage increase, the Magic Scorpion Charm that increases the damage of all magic attacks by 12%, which Smerig's Glintstone Breath deals purely of, the Roar Medallion increasing all of the dragon attacks by 10%, and Phlox Canvas doing the same thing but for an 8% boost instead. In total, we're at 95% including the bleed buffs and there's still 2 slash 3-ish more things to increase it further. 
Like, we can get another 50% damage boost easily, and it doesn't require dropping your health down to 1 HP, wearing no armor, or using consumables that you'd have to farm for. They're all infinitely reusable, which has got to be my favorite part about it. But before I get carried away, I'll show you guys where you can find the stuff I just mentioned. So, to get the Dragon Communion Seal, you gotta go back to the very start of the game at the Stranded Graveyard Site of Grace. It's the first dungeon you ever come across, but you need two Stone Sword keys to gain access, which honestly aren't too hard to get at all, so don't stress too much. Once you're in, head down the tunnel with the Mechanized Chariot and take the path that goes up. Pretty much just keep going up until you reach a small room with a banished knight in it and kill him to get the seal. The only difficult thing here is getting the stone sword key and that's about it. Next, for the Dragon Breaths, you're gonna have to kill the correlated dragons for each move. The Borealis one for his frost attack can be found in the freezing fog in the mountaintops of the Giants area. A bit of a late game thing to get, but the upside to this is you can use the lesser version of it, Dragon Ice, that does the same thing except for dealing 19% less damage, but also has a lower stat requirement to use, so it's pretty good for the early game. And you also only need one Dragon Heart to buy it, so you can kill any dragon you come across and get it right after. The place you buy all the dragon attacks from is in Kaelid at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. Same thing for Smerex Glintstone Breath and this is the easiest and earliest one you can get, which is nice since it's also the hardest hitting attack we can throw out so getting that as soon as possible is gonna make the game 10 times easier. Anyways, you're gonna have to kill the Glintstone Dragon found in Liurni of the Lakes, the one that has the key hidden behind him that everyone kinda just takes and runs away so they can enter the academy, that one. He only has 6,000 health, so like I said, it's not going to be a difficult fight. Well, dragons in general aren't too difficult when you just run under them and swing at their feet. Lastly, if you want to grab a Zeke's Decay, you can find him resting along the main road in Kaelid. Funny enough, this guy has no resistance or armor to any attacks. Literally, you'll do even more damage to him. The only thing he's strong against is Rot and Poison. Other than that, Melee, Magic, Frost, and Bleed will shred him down easily. Realistically, you can kill him quite easily to get the Rot attack, a Dragon Heart, and some runes. So, I guess why not stop by and take him down? Now, for the talismans, we have three of them to get. Starting with the easiest one, the Roar Medallion, this can be rewarded after killing the Stone Digger Troll that's located at the end of the Limgrave Tunnels. Like, right when you start the game, you can head straight there and kill him before you ever level up. The fight is that easy. And after, to get Phlox Canvas, there's two things you can do. You can either complete Millicent's full questline and then kill Gowry who drops the talisman, or you can completely skip Millicent's questline and kill her right when you see her and then kill Gowry to get the talisman. If you kill Millicent and get locked out of her questline, you will lose the opportunity to get another talisman. It's not used in this build, so I guess it's not a huge issue, but it is a good talisman for more dexterity focused builds. Just something to keep in mind. Finally, for the Magic Scorpion Charm, you're gonna have to give Perceptor Celevis the Amber Starlight after he tells you about his scheme. I'd recommend watching a full video on how to get this cause it can be a bit tricky and if you end up giving Ronnie the Finger Slayer Blade, he dies and you get locked out of getting it. Like I said, just watch a quick video on it and you'll be good. It's just marvelous. <laughs> Moving forward, I did find one major issue when it came to using the dragon attacks and that is you become completely open to getting hit and you can't do anything about it either. So using a summoning is going to be really handy, you don't need anything crazy like the mimic tier, using literally anything to distract the boss for 10 seconds is all you need. But if you do want the best one for this setup, you're going to want to grab the dung eater. He's extremely aggressive, gets aggroed very fast taking the attention away from you, tanky, and he's also a part of what gives us another 50% 
50% increased damage. The weapon he uses is the Sword of Milos. It builds up bleed, which is another nice bonus for us, but the main thing about it is the Ash of War on it, Shriek of Milos. When he activates this, it debuffs enemies, making them lose 15% of all of their damage resistances, in turn, almost the same thing as them taking 15% increased damage, and he does this a lot. If you don't want to go out of your way to get the Dung Eater summoning, it's not going to cause any major issues. Again, using any summoning will do just fine. We really only need them to distract the boss for a short amount of time and that's it. But if you do want the Dung Eater, there's kind of a long process behind it involving Preceptor Celevis, so just like the Magic Scorpion charm, it's best to watch a step-by-step -step video on how to actually get him, but it is worth it in the end. The second thing I use to get that extra 50% damage is the Incantation Golden Vow. Since we need quite a few levels in Faith to use the Dragon Attacks, it only made sense to add a handful more to get this buff. When used, it increases everyone nearby's damage by 15% and protection by 10% for 80 seconds. If you end up using a summoning, this can affect them as well as long as you use Golden Vow when they're close by. So to get this, you can pick it up off a corpse found in the corpse stench shack in the Mount Gelmer area. There's going to be a couple of guys trying to ambush you, so be careful of that, or just run in, take it, and run away. It's really up to you. Now the last thing to get us an extra 50% increased damage point is the Flask of Wondrous Physic. The only tier needed is the Magic Shrouding one that increases the damage of all magic attacks by 20% while lasting for 3 minutes. And for the other spot, I just tossed in the Hidden Cerulean tier that gives you infinite mana for 15 seconds. Honestly, it's not bad at all, it basically just saves me the use of a mana flask or two, but feel free to use whatever you want, you only really need the Magic Shrouding one. The nice thing about this is after you kill the dragon in Lyrany of the Lakes and get Smarag's Glintstone Breath, you can head over to the minor Erdtree in the northeastern part of the lake and kill the Erdtree Avatar boss to be given it. The fight's easy as well, with it only having a bit more than 4500 health, you'll get to use Smarag's Glintstone Breath right away here. The only thing left in this build now are the armor, stats, and the best way to use everything. So I think I'll go over the armor first, even though there's not too much to it, then the best way to use everything, and end off with the stats. Saying that, let's take a better look at the armor. So you already know for the headpiece, I'm running the white mask for the damage buff it gives whenever a blood loss happens near us, but the rest of the armor isn't too important. I threw on the mausoleum set for its looks and the decent amount of armor it provides. You mainly just want to use any type of medium armor, nothing too heavy so we don't have to invest too many points into endurance, and nothing too light so we don't get one or two shotted by most enemies. So, the way you get the White Mask is by killing the three nameless White Mask invaders that spawn in the lake full of blood in the Mogwin Dynasty Mausoleum area. Just run around the lake for a bit because each invader spawns in different parts of it. The only thing you have to do is not kill the boss here in Mogwin before doing this or else they won't spawn in and you'll be locked out of getting it. But before that, if you want the mausoleum set, you're gonna have to farm it off of the mausoleum knight that stands right outside the black knife catacombs. There's a site of grace close to the entrance, so you can keep respawning the knight until you get everything you want. Now, once you have everything, the way you use it all to maximize your damage isn't too hard. The first thing you'll want to do is call out your summoning and then use Golden Val to buff the two of you. Next, use the Ashivor Seppuku on yourself to get the damage buff from Blood Loss and then use the Flask of Wondrous Physic to get the infinite mana and the damage boost. Again, the infinite mana isn't something needed, more like a nice bonus. First attack you're going to throw out is the Borealis Mist to debuff them while doing damage at the same time, and then follow up with Smarag's Glintstone Breath to melt their health bar away. You'll want to make sure your summoning is distracting them while all of this is going on, or at the very least, give yourself a good amount of space where they can't hit you. If they're still alive after those two attacks, just run in and hit them three times with the sword to proc another blood loss to get that buff going again, and then hit them with another Smarex Glintstone Breath. You only need to do all that on the toughest bosses in the game. Most enemies you can kill with either just the sword with seppuku on it, or using the dragon breath attacks without buffing yourself up. So with everything covered in this build, let's go over those stats. 
Starting off with the bare minimum, you're gonna need at least 15 strength, 14 dex, 15 arcane, and 23 faith just to use the weapons and dragon attacks. Afterwards, I'd focus more on getting to 25 faith to use golden vow, and then split your levels between arcane for damage and vigor for health. You don't want to go too much to one side or else you're gonna be dealing lots of damage but getting one-shotted. Or you can take a lot of hits but deal barely anything. And lastly, 16 endurance to still be able to fast roll with all the items equipped, and then toss whatever leftover points you have into mind. You only need 14 minimum to get the full use of each dragon attack. If you start the game off with the profit class, you'll be able to match my stats exactly. If you're using anything else, you may have to take some points away from either vigor or mind, but that's not a huge issue. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to check out some of my other build related guides. Thanks for watching, and I hope I see you all in the next one.